Hi everybody, today we are going to make a hot process soap using only grocery store items. Here are your ingredients and the amounts. Notice that it's in grams. Let me show you what we got. We have processed refined coconut oil. This was a good deal. I bought it at the store for $12. Next we have plain old vegetable oil. This is made with soybeans. I'm going to turn it around and show it to you. It says soybean oil. Check the label. See? Plain old vegetable oil. The really cheap kind. We're going for the cheapest stuff we can find to make the simplest soap we can make. We've got a Mediterranean blend here. It's got olive oil, sunflower oil, and canola. It lists the percentages of each on the back so check the label again this was also relatively cheap and the magical ingredient that we have to be very careful with is the lye found in the plumbing department and purified drinking water it is preferable that you use distilled water because there are no additives in the distilled water but purified water does have a few mineral additives and so we're going to test it to make sure it works just as well some of your safety precautions you're going to want to wear goggles so you don't get anything in your eye this is a candy thermometer you can use i have an hvac heat gun that works best but in a pinch you can use a candy thermometer make sure you put your gloves on and have long sleeves on so that you're safe. We're going to use a plain old kitchen scale to measure out our ingredients here. Make sure you tear that scale each time between things. Coconut oil is a little hard to get out of the container. We're going to put it in the slow cooker on its lowest setting and it will begin to melt. We're going to melt it the rest of the way using a heat transfer technique where you mix the lye water, it gets incredibly warm, and you pour that hot lye over top of your solid oils or fats. We're going to measure out our liquids into a separate container, and once the solid is melted, we will add liquid to it. I created this recipe to use more of the vegetable oil than anything, because that's going to be your cheapest oil and probably the easiest to find because most people carry vegetable oil in their pantries here's where we mix the lye we're going to measure the lye into one container measure the water into a second container and then we are going to mix the two together always always i can't stress this enough adding the lye to the water not the water to the lye mixing very well we're going to make sure that it is dissolved and then to keep this bar nice and hard we're going to add a teaspoon of plain table salt and mix that in with the lye water as well until you notice that it is fully dissolved we're gonna, I like to use a silicone spoon to mix with just because it's easier to clean. You're gonna pour your lye water down that spoon so it doesn't splash and that's what's going to create your melted solid oil. Mind you, the slow cooker is still on. We're gonna blend it up till we get all the chunks out and add the liquid. And that's pretty much all we have to do to put into this soap. All of our ingredients are here unless you want to add something that makes it look pretty or makes it feel nicer. But that's your basic soap. We're going to use a stick blender, which is my preferred method. You can use a hand blender, but it takes forever. And we're going to stick blend until we get a light trace, which means when you pull it up out of the batter, you will see the spot where it is and it'll be kind of drippy
once you bring it to a light trace, <clears throat> you're going to cover it and leave it to cook for a little while. I'm going to set an alarm for 20 minutes and halfway through I am stirring it. So after 10 minutes you've reached phase one and it's kind of like mashed potatoes. Some people call it the applesauce stage. After another 10 minutes it's starting to turn into a lot chunkier kind of um, icing kind of feeling. And then we're gonna leave it another 10 minutes. Make sure you stir it really well in between and scrape the sides gently. I'm kind of chopping up some of those pieces. So we have that all done. We're gonna cover it. We're gonna let it cook just a little while longer. Another 10 minutes. Now it's starting to look a lot like Vaseline. We're getting really close here. I'm gonna blend it really good. I'm going to allow it to cook just a little bit longer to make sure that it's ready. What you don't see on camera is I did pH strip test it and it's right about where it needs to be, but now it's time to put it in the mold. But I decided I wanted to add some matcha powder, which is essentially green tea. Added a little drizzle of extra vegetable oil in it just so I could get the color mixed up. You have to work really fast now. You need to get it into that mold as fast as you can because it will start to get solid and it will have a lot of air pockets and doesn't pour like a cake batter anymore. As you can see it's really thick so you kind of have to smack it down and try to get all of the little holes out but that's pretty impossible to do. You'll see that mine didn't. Now, what I'm, I'm using my fingers that are gloved, obviously, to kind of smush it down to try to fill up those holes. So the greeny color is coming from the matcha powder that I put in there, just so I could have a two-tone soap. Green tea is actually really good for your skin, so that's why I chose it. You can get this powder in the health food section of the grocery store, so it still falls under the grocery store soap. I just can never leave anything alone and I have to have it look pretty. So I've smashed it all in there and I packed it down with my fingers the best I could. That is what it's going to look like. Wow, that is pretty ugly, but I'm used to making fancy soap, so it's kind of, I'm a little biased. Cold process is my favorite way. I've seen lots of people who make beautiful hot process soaps, but apparently I'm not one of those people. The point here is we're going to make soap that we can use right away and that's what our goal is today. I'm going to pop it out of that mold. Again, if you don't have a mold like this, you can create one by lining any kind of boxy container with parchment and now we're going to cut it. That looks kind of cool. Right on. I just use plain copy paper to set it down on. You want to make sure that if you do have a cutter or something like this, you're going to have it clean. Now, as far as cutting goes, see how this looks like a giant cheese slicer? Cheese slicers actually are probably the most usable kitchen gadget that you could substitute here. But you could just use a knife and just slice it. You won't get the perfect sizes or anything. But since I am going to try to give this away or sell it or something, I wanted to try to make it look pretty. So I'm going to use my professional soap cutter. It turned out a lot cooler than I thought it would. I've never made the soap look like this before. The hot process is definitely something you have to get used to, but I'm kind of regretting not putting a scent in it because it doesn't smell like anything, but you could always add something to it if you wanted.
I'm pretty happy with the way this came in, together. It, it just looks a, a little bit of interest. I like the, the stripes that I kind of got out of it. Um, we'll see how it performs once it's dry. I'll give it a day or two, but I'm pretty happy with it. Hopefully that was easy enough that you could follow along and now you can make your own soap in case you run out. And if you prefer not to make your own soap and you'd like to purchase this from me, just contact us at Mystic Herbal Creations. We're on Facebook and on Fayholm. Thanks for watching.